My first experience with rental property actually wasn't that bad. I had a good realtor, I had a good mortgage lender, and I simply followed their guidance and before I knew it, I was the happy owner of a two flat. The second rental property I bought was an absolute nightmare. I did everything wrong. First off, I decided that I didn't need a realtor for that second one. I had a realtor the first time. I pretty much watched everything that they did and I'm thinking, I'm a smart guy. I got a college degree. I can figure it out myself. And I also did a lot of study and I was probably like you guys spending hours on YouTube. I probably studied for months. So of course I know everything. You can't tell me nothing. I found a seller who was looking to sell their home for pretty much pennies on the dollar. And when I went to take a look at that home, the home was in pretty good condition. Just a few cosmetic things to clean up in. It seemed like that was it. So if that's the case, no need to have a home inspection, right? Oh, and last but not least, I didn't use an attorney and I didn't even use your average loan. I decided to use a hard money loan because it'll be easier to qualify for a hard money loan. Ouch. You want to know how that transaction ended? When I bought the property, I found out that I actually had to evict the person that sold the home to me. Think about that. Think about how bad a real estate deal has to go where you have to evict the person that sold the home to you. Have you ever thought about buying rental property, but there was always something just holding you back? On one hand, you hear about all the wonderful stories about getting passive income monthly, but on the other hand, you're also hearing all these horror stories like the one I just told you, or maybe horror stories from your friends and family about tenants and unexpected repairs, stuff like that, and it always caused you to just hesitate. Well, the good news is once I got my real estate license and learned a lot more about rental properties and real estate in general, I found out that not everybody has to have the experience or the horror story that I had. It's actually pretty simple and pretty easy to buy rental property. However, there are some things that you as a first time real estate buyer need to look out for in order to avoid those terrible situations. I want you to learn from my mistakes because once again, buying rental property does not have to be that frustrating. With everything going on in the economy today with inflation and with prices of everything from groceries to gas just skyrocketing, now is important as ever to be able to generate some passive income or to be able to get some extra monthly income to help offset these rising costs. And as far as passive income goes, one of the easiest ways to generate passive income that anybody can do, no matter what your education or your job or your status in life is, is to buy rental property, especially a multi-unit building. So tell me, could you use an extra thousand dollars a month? If so, keep watching this video and I'll show you some things to look out for when buying a rental property. And also don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe button and let me know what topics you want me to cover as far as real estate in the future. As a home buyer, the first thing we need to do is to check to see what your estimated mortgage will be with today's interest rates. Now I'm sure by now we all know that interest rates have risen a lot. I believe as of today, they're over 7%. With those high interest rates, we need to make sure that we can comfortably afford whatever mortgage that we're planning on getting. So it's very important for you as a buyer to set up a budget and figure out how much you can afford to pay. We have to remember that the purpose of buying this rental property in the first place is to help ease the stress of inflation and to help ease the stress by earning more money through this monthly rental income. However, if we're purchasing a building that's going to have a mortgage that we're going to struggle to pay, that's going to have the opposite effect. It's actually going to stress us out more and we don't want that. Here's what you need to do. Speak with your mortgage lender to find out what your estimated mortgage will be. Once you do that, whatever rental property you're interested in, compare that mortgage to the amount of rental income that you're going to get per month. If you're okay with that difference or if you're okay paying that difference, then you're all good to go. Now, of course, that's assuming that you're actually going to live in one of the units and rent out the other. If you're planning on renting out the entire thing, or if you're just renting out the single family home, then ideally you're going to want the monthly income to be more than the mortgage you're going to be paying on it. Because you just don't want to pay to own a rental property. Once again, you want that monthly income. As a buyer, the second thing you need to look out for is to watch out for these overpriced properties or these overpriced homes. 
sellers are still riding the high from 2021 and the beginning of 2022 where they could price their properties at pretty much whatever they wanted and it would sell at that price. The market was just so hot that no matter what you put out there, it got at least three to five offers and it was pretty much like an auction. They could just keep driving the price higher and higher and higher. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that market is gone. Today, it is not like that. The market has returned more to normal. However, as a realtor who deals with sellers all the time, I often find that sellers do not want to believe that. They want to believe that the good times are still here, so they still want to list their home or list their properties as high as they possibly can to see if they can get away with it. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with sellers while I try to explain to them what their property is worth by showing them concrete evidence only for them to come back to me and want to list their properties for twenty-five, thirty thousand more just to see if they can get it because they still believe the market is hot and they'll have multiple offers no matter what they do. And at the end of the day, it's really human nature to just try to get as much as you can, right? Don't get me wrong, the market is still competitive but the market has calmed down a lot this year. So as a buyer, you don't have to put up with sellers overpricing homes like that. Whatever property you're interested in, make sure to have your realtor check out the comps to see what similar homes are selling for. That way you can make an informed decision when you're ready to submit an offer on that property and once again, not pay too much. Also, here's a bonus tip for you. If you're interested in a property that you feel is overpriced and the seller isn't willing to negotiate down on that price, simply wait them out. If the property is overpriced, chances are it's going to sit on the market for two, three, maybe even six months. Once it's two, three months down the line, submit your offer again and I guarantee you that seller is going to be more willing to negotiate. The third thing you need to look out for as a buyer are the property taxes. Property taxes are often a big part of the mortgage, so you need to make sure you pay attention to what the property taxes are for whatever piece of real estate you're buying. Make sure to check with your mortgage lender whenever they pre-approve you and ask what they're estimating the property taxes to be. If they're estimating their property taxes are going to be around, let's say, $300,000 for the year, and you try to buy a property where the property taxes are $7,000 a year, your pre-approval isn't going to get that far, and chances are your deal's going to fall apart because your lender's going to tell you you can't afford that property. The last thing you want to do is to have your deal fall apart after you've negotiated with the seller, got the home under contract, and you probably paid money for an inspection. Property taxes are often overlooked by buyers and mortgage lenders, but once again, that's a very important part. It's a huge chunk of your mortgage and you need to make sure that you can afford to pay the property taxes as well as the mortgage. And tip number four that you need to look out for, uh, well, it's not even something you need to look out for. It's just a piece of advice that you should really take is to use professionals. Make sure you hire professionals to help you out through this process. If I would have hired a realtor as well as a real estate attorney for my second deal, not only would they told me to not use a hard money loan because the interest rates on those are just ridiculous, they would have also told me to wait until the seller moves out before I close on the property. That way I could avoid having to actually evict the person that sold me the home. Now that I look back on it, it's pretty silly and ridiculous that I had to deal with the stuff that I dealt with because it was so easy to avoid it. And that's why, once again, I suggest that as buyers, you take advantage of real estate investors. They're worth way more than what you're going to pay for them in fees. All right, hopefully you found this video informative. And if you have any questions, and of course, if you're looking to buy or sell any real estate in the Chicagoland area, I'm your guy.